Well, for more on China's growing economic ties with Panama, I'm joined from New York by Lord Casanova, Senior Lecturer and Director of the Emerging Markets Institute at Cornell University. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So first off, tell us about the significance of this opening embassy. It's very important. Let's remember that last year, when the enlarged Panama Canal was inaugurated, the first ves vessel crossing the Panama Canal, this enlarged Panama Canal, was a Chinese one with 9,000 containers, the Costco vessel. So the, the relation is, comes from very long, long ago. Let's remember also that 5% of the global trade goes through the Panama Canal. So definitely, it's a very important logistic point in the world. And China has already expressed interest in um, buying land around the Panama Canal, has also expressed interest in building a train, and also the fourth, um, the fourth bridge across the Panama Canal, as well as the uh, second metro in uh, Panama City. And how would you say we've seen the economic relationship between Panama and China really progress over the last decade or so? We have seen um, also that uh, China bought one of the largest ports in uh, Panama as well, close to the Panama Canal. The same company that bought the Pireo um, port in Greece, but also one of the biggest ports in Panama. So uh, Panama was a target for Chinese companies for a while. But of course, establishing the diplomatic the relations favors and of course uh, hopes uh, that this uh, relation will deepen in the years to come. Now certainly a lot of opportunities in different industries lie ahead. So what would each country ideally like to achieve in terms of bilateral trade ties moving forward? Mm. So, of course, uh, Panamanian companies expect to export more of their products to China. And uh, definitely the foreign uh, minister of China in his visit visited some of these companies, medium-sized companies, and uh, they were exploring different ways in which uh, China can be a target for Panamanian products. That's one way. The other way is much more uh, um, targeted towards, as I mentioned, the train, a light train, then the metro, the fourth bridge over the, Canama, the Panama Canal, and of course, uh, land around the Panama Canal that can be used for logistic and uh, warehouse purposes. And in terms of some of the policies that are still in place, what do you see as potential challenges that could perhaps hamper some of the growth that we're seeing in the China-Panama relationship? I believe that, uh, the, of course, we are in an exploration phase. There are two countries that only recently established the diplomatic ties. So we are in an uh, era of exploring each other, of getting to know each other. But definitely, um, that, uh, China has been the most important trading partner of, of South America for quite a long time. Uh, China is the most important investor in Brazil, in South America. So China and Chinese companies have a very close uh, knowledge of the region. So this is one more point, of course, uh, one uh, very important country in Central America. And of course, that only expands. So goes the most of the interests of China are in South America. So now we are moving to Central America and, of course, Mexico. So it's just uh, part of the power of China in Latin America in the last 10 years. Now let's also look at some of the other regional issues. We see what's happening in Venezuela with its economic crisis, some political turmoil, possible migration issues. Mm -hmm. How is all that affecting Panama and its trade partners? So three things re regarding China. China, as I said, main trade partner of South America. And now, second phase, the most important investor in uh, the biggest economy in the region, Brazil. But let's not forget the third, and that is the loans. So China has been a provider of loans mainly for um, Venezuela, Argentina, Brazil, and Ecuador. So of course, as of late, the, uh, chi uh, the Chinese loans uh, to Venezuela have been, if not stopped, slowed down. But then, uh, yesterday, President Maduro said that from now on, because of the difficulties in the uh, exchange rate between the Bolivar and the dollar, 
that as of late was going to put the prices in renminbis, which is interesting. So let's see how this, because this is a very recent measure, let's see how it moves forward. So of course, uh, as uh, any global investor, China and Chinese companies, uh, they, they face some setbacks, but of course, the Chinese international expansion is relatively recent. It started mainly in 2004 and mainly after the global financial crisis in full form um, in, in, the, in the size that we see it today, 2008, 2009. So, of course, Chinese companies are learning. And from the learning, they will become better and invest more cautiously. But Panama, uh, compared to Venezuela or other countries, is much more stable in the last years. So I don't foresee any of the problems that are right now in Venezuela, in Panama. All right. Well, thank you so much for your insights. Lord Katzen over there, senior lecturer and director of the Emerging Markets Institute at Cornell University.